What's up guys? So this is an emergency video because I was working on two, no, three other videos and then like excuses, 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 crazy things. And then I suddenly received uh, these goggles. And you know me, I'm not an expert in doing reviews, for example. This is a cool review of the charger. It, it charges the battery. Yeah, it does. It's I mean, look, and it charges two batteries. But I just had to record my first impressions about these goggles. So it's going to be fun. But first, let me call to my goggles expert. Do we even have an emergency goggles expert? So the expert is sleeping. But he left me his goggles with the most realistic picture ever. More than you can even imagine. So there we go. They fit nice, and uh, plug it in. This is so realistic. I, I wish you could see it. You can hardly call me an HD0 fanboy, because I have this separate receiver for like a year or maybe even two. I even built this open racer with HD0 like maybe half a year ago. And my total time with HD0 before goggles is crazy. 15 minutes. Please don't tell it to Carl. Because I don't really need a cool picture in the goggles to enjoy drone racing. Of course it would be a nice addition, but just no way I am dealing with that. Even if it gives me like 4k thousand frame per second right in my eye nerves. Just no way I'm dealing with that. So the goggles, I didn't get them for free and I'm allowed to share any thoughts. All the nasty ones. First of all guys, the firmware on these goggles still has some bugs. And this is expected because they are beta goggles. And I'm proud to be a member of beta testing program for these goggles with 300 other people to help brilliant engineers from HD0 like Carl to polish these goggles. So all of these little firmware bugs don't really matter because I'm pretty sure they will be fixed in near future. But if you're still curious about them, at the end of this video I'll have like a short list of, of the ones I noticed. So this is Joe Mama, professional HD0 pilot. What do you think about the goggles so far? I think they're pretty good. Pretty good. And you like that they're green? I love that they're green. Yeah. So what do you like the, the most about them so far? No more VRX. Look at this guy from medieval ages with all these wires on his face. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's also trying to race everyone while saying he's not racing. <laughs> I said, I'm not racing, I'm just setting the pace for you. So, the design of these goggles. What do you think? I saw some people in the internet saying that they don't like this design at all. They said that they're like ugly as hell. As for me, I can't believe we are actually discussing how the goggles look. Come on. Because first of all, tastes differ. But the main reason, check this out. Like this. And I don't see how goggles looks from outside anymore. And if I put orcas on, I don't see goggles. But you probably see the same damn nerd and you're probably happy that something covered at least half of my face. They are big goggles, bigger than orcas. And they are a little bit green, so it's not just a photo, but that might be fixed in future. But what's important for me is that even with the analog module with the antennas, they still fit in my backpack in the goggles compartment. Analog TBS Fusion module should work nicely with a native cover from TBS. I have rapid fire and I lost the cover, so there we go waiting for some 3D prints. Analog module bay comes on and off kinda easy, but I think I just leave it on there permanently. Maybe even like put a screw there because there is like a little hole for the screw that you can just like permanently attach it. Just a reminder that the goggles don't come with an analog module bay and you need to order it separately if you need it. You need it if you need it. And if you don't need the analog module bay, then, then you don't need an analog module bay. These four HD0 antennas are from TrueRC and they don't come with the goggles. These little 3D printed holders are available on Thingiversa and the local guy Ian printed them for me. Some people say he's a vampire, but you know, we're not judging here. The goggles come with two face plates for different type of faces, sort of a little bit narrow and a little bit more wide. The narrow one fits my face very well. There's like no light leaks and the pressure on my face along the perimeter is excessively even. I was shocked when I saw the face plates for the first time because you see, the Velcro was already sticked on for us on both of the face plates. Thank you, HD0. Really, no, like, really, thank you for that. The goggles are very comfortable to wear, at least for me, and they even come with like 
extra wide head strap, which is, a, I think, a very nice touch. The goggles come with a nice long power cord, which seems to be like a high quality one with XT60 on one side and 90 degrees on the other side. Unfortunately, this cable doesn't work with TS100 soldering iron, but TS100 soldering iron cable does work with the goggles. I was extremely happy to see the power slider, but one little thing, the moment you plug the power cable, it's not very comfortable to reach. But I think it still works way better than, for example, the button on Sky Zones that you need to push like for a second. Personally, I would prefer a little bit more the power plug from the bottom, like on Sky Zones 04, because then this cable would be straight and it would be very comfortable to use with a soldering iron. In this case, the soldering iron cable looks you know, a little bit dangerous. But it's not a big deal at all. The fan these goggles do sound like you're never gonna get foggy goggles. They're relatively loud. I think it's not a big deal. And the good side, you're never gonna be like, is, can someone please wipe the camera on my drone? Oh, that's my goggles. The top fan is pretty big. And if you have long hair, watch out. They might get stuck inside of these little holes. I almost actually had that happen and uh, my haircut is is way overdue <laughs> so i so used to see ryan's uh, face with h0 goggles so every time i look at joma in h0 goggles <laughs> i think it's ryan <laughs> i'm ryan quelle focus and ipd adjustments they are so nice to have i think in 21st century every goggle should have them there is one thing i don't like about these particular adjustments that Every time you put these goggles in the backpack, you mess up your settings because these knobs are sort of sticking out from the goggles and it's kind of easy to rotate them. But to be fair, I have the same problems with Orca IPD and focus adjustments. I think the best solution here was again from SkyZones 04, where I pretty much never touched this knob and these rollers because they're pretty even with the goggles. Another thing to keep in mind, these goggles do drain battery pretty fast. I used uh, this 1400 success at night spot and I think it lasted for like less than three hours. I'm the type of a guy that just leave the goggles plugged in all the time. Maybe I just need to change my habits. But if you do unplug your goggles and you're a racer, then you need to keep in mind, Derek, that the loading time for these goggles is, I think, even longer than in Orcas. So, so pre-plug your goggles before the round. The goggle screens are pretty nice. In 16 by 9 mode, I think it's a little bit too wide because like even the corners are a little bit out of bounds of view. But who cares about 16 by 9? Get the fuck out of here. We are flying in 3D space doing like weird like upside down maneuvers. So we need to see up and down almost as much as left and right. And 4x3 mode in these goggles I think is just perfect. The field of view is a little bit smaller than Sky Zones 04 and a little bit bigger than Orca. I don't remember the numbers just but I think it's just good just good that sound means good i don't see any distortions in the screen so like the edges are straight and parallel whereas for example in orcas the edges are a little bit like these so i don't know much about optics honestly but i know when i'm enjoying it another nice feature of these goggles they have a built-in microphone so that you could record shit talking with your friends while you're flying your drones oh derek i'm about to hit you <laughs> Motherfucker, son of a bitch, you fucking down my god! So the built-in microphone is alright, but you can hear the fan noises pretty good. But you can put an external microphone, and I use the same as I installed in Orcas, and it's like $11. Affiliate link is in the description. So let's compare the sound. This is HD0 goggles built-in microphone. This is Orca goggles, small external microphone. HD0 goggles, small external microphone. And let's listen one more time. Your shit pilot. Your shit pilot. Your shit pilot. To my taste, the winner is HD0 with external microphone. So that's a nice $11 update for goggles. The menu in the goggles works nicely with a spinning wheel and with only two buttons. It's super intuitive, it's responsive. HD0, nicely done, really good job. Flashing the goggles with a new firmware is a piece of cake. You just put file on SD card and use menu for that. I just did it yesterday at night spot, like no problems at all. Another outstanding thing to mention is that the firmware for the goggles is open source. So I think it will only get better and in near future we're gonna see some really nice features and like just cool things from the community. So now as spicy stuff, how would I compare an HD0 system as a whole 
versus analog and versus DJI and maybe versus Voxnail. No, I don't have Voxnail. I'm not the guy to test the video range, so just like a brief thoughts, you can dismiss all of them. So on 25 milliwatts, the performance and the amount of interference seems to be pretty close to analog 25 milliwatts. Of course, the picture is better than analog, no discussions here, but I was lying at night with the lights, and I think it's like more motion blur in HD0, and I don't think I really like it. Like for recordings, for YouTube, motion blur, a little bit of motion blur looks like fancy and fine. But in the goggles, I want to see that sharp picture that helps me recognize obstacles faster. And I think it must be something camera related. I was flying Rancam Nano 2 HD0 camera. We played with some settings with Joe Mama. It helped a little bit, but actually I am looking forward for 90 FPS camera because that could be a game changer for all this motion blur for racing and for uh, and for latency. And of course, during the day, HD0 picture is, is very nice. No motion blur whatsoever. And it's just, it's just gorgeous. By the way, I really enjoy the fact that all the VTX and camera settings are in the stick commands menu. And this is very nice. You want to play like with the settings. You want to flip your camera image. You want to switch to LED mode. It's just there for you. Just enjoy it. But before you use HD0 stick commands, please make sure that your drone is disarmed. Because we had a funny and, and scary story at night spot. Mr. Anonymous, we're not going to call Jamama's name out, decided to change the settings in the VTX. I don't remember what was that. But he forgot to disarm his squad. It was still in front of him on the ground spinning props. And imagine what happens next when he just slammed the sticks for the, for the stick commands. So the drone took off, did like a tight orbit, like the tightest, prettiest orbit I ever seen. And like just launched toward the Cole's car. After that, Mr. Cole shows up at night spot only with a helmet, and this is his real photo racing at night spot. Of course, all the name matching in this story with real life are just random and coincidences. So how do I think it all compares with uh, DJI? Of course DJI is like way better picture, especially with the new DJI system. So it's a way better picture, it's a better like um, signal penetration through the obstacles, it seems like it's a better interference resistance, so a lot of things are better in DJI. But when I fly DJI, just me personally, I lose this, a little bit of this connectivity of my fingers with a drone because of the variable latency. and it makes and it makes the experience a little bit less enjoyable however this is related only to high performance flying for example like racing and with that said i really enjoy dji on my like semi long range drone on my freestyle drone and i'm gonna enjoy dji on the cinewoop that i'm planning to build already like since like a a month ago. So, as I promised, a short section at the end about the um, HD0 goggles uh, firmware bugs that we sort of found out and saw at night spot. But as I said earlier, I don't think this is important at all because these bugs is a part of goggles beta testing and I know that Carl is working to fix some of them literally right now. So, maybe half of these bugs like will be gone like in two hours or like in two days. So I'm very excited about these goggles because they also supposed to provide a better analog picture because of some fancy like interlacing and deinterlacing algorithm. And currently it was hard to see the better analog picture because the analog looks overexposed in these goggles. It's a known bug, it's gonna get fixed, but this is what it is now, whatever. Another thing about rapid fire module and these goggles is that when you have poor signal or no signal, these goggles will show you, will go to black screen instead of static. And um, this is not very nice, but again, H0 team knows about this problem and I have no doubts that they will fix it. Maybe they already fixed it, I need to check Discord. It looks like I was testing analog more than HG0, and that's not actually true, but other bugs are also related to rapid fire module. So rapid fire in mode two, for some reason shows like way more interference than I used to see, but in mode one, it, it actually works flawlessly. There was another problem with like analog DVR recording, but it already get fixed, like literally while I was flying at night spot and I just updated it there and the problem has disappeared. No, but seriously, I think this section is useless. I feel like in seven days, there will be like no point in listening to that. In case you didn't know, Mr. Carl is the main HD0 guy. He's like the owner, he's also like the main developer. I met him in real life and he's like a 
true engineer and also like a very humble person. It was a pleasure to talk to him, to like realize how much he knows and realize how much he actually cares about our hobby, about like racing. There are like what, like thousand, maybe like 2000 racers in the United States, maybe like 5000 racers around the world. I don't know, but it's just not a lot of people. And suddenly, like, we are important, and, and this is pretty cool. And suddenly, like, the business listening to us, this is amazing. Johnny5 actually has a nice interview with Mr. Carl. Go check it out, link in the description. But only after you like, subscribe, put a comment, after you click all the affiliate links, after you, like, go check the Patreon page, only after that go check it out, the interview. So, see you in the next video, if I'm not lazy.